Hi to anyone who is there already waiting. Just gonna see if there's um, any interest in the stream, wait for some people to pop in. Um, I noticed last time when I was live, um, I missed a lot of questions. And I thought that I was, I thought I was being very diligent about answering everyone's questions, but apparently the chat room on StreamYard isn't, it's not as accurate as I would like. So I'm just going to make sure I have a pop-out chat here. Um, hi, Padfa. How you doing, buddy? Um, so yeah, if you want to ask questions, feel free to do that in the regular chat. Do not feel pressured to send super chats or anything like that. I'm just <clears throat> heavily pregnant in self-imposed quarantine. I don't want to leave the house. So <laughs> to get a little bit of social interaction and um, see what you guys are doing and how you guys are feeling about all the craziness that's been going on in the world lately. I thought I'd do a little live stream. Hi, Tyler. What are my thoughts on soy? <laughs> this should be clear by now, guys. You know, I hate soy. Soy is very bad for you. Actually, okay, to be honest, I, <laughs> I actually love tofu. I love like crispy tofu that's really spicy. Um, but my husband forbids me from eating it. Um, and I certainly wouldn't be eating it while pregnant. So yeah, I haven't had soy anything soy in a very long time. Like when I go for my grocery shop, if I'm going to buy anything that's uh, in a box on the shelf, I always check the ingredients. And if there's any soy oil or soy byproducts whatsoever, it doesn't go in my cart. Um, I think maybe there is a little bit of like not hysteria surrounding soy. Like it does have endocrine disrupting properties, but I don't know how bad it really is. Like if I have like a plate of spicy salt and pepper crispy tofu once every six months, is that going to like cause me harm? Probably not. <laughs> um, hi guys. Nice to see some people filtering in. Um, let's see. Do I have woo flu? No, I don't. Not yet. I have been, <laughs> I mean, like I'm, I'm very much a homebody. I don't leave the house unless it's for errands anyway. I don't, um, I don't go to large public gatherings much these days because I'm so pregnant. Um, if I'm going over to like a friend's house for dinner, um, you know, that only happens maybe twice a month. So I'm in the house a lot anyways. Uh, I don't have a lot of exposure to what um, you know, a, a people who live in a city would be exposed to. So I don't think I have the flu, but as we know, there is a, what, 14 to potentially 27 day, uh, incubation period, asymptomatic incubation period with the coronavirus. So, I mean, it's possible I'm infected. I had a, a visitor come over to the house last week unexpectedly. Uh, and I was like, I was freaking out. I was low-key freaking out because I don't, I don't get visitors very often. Um, I think it's lovely that, you know, uh, someone who was checking in on me and wanted to make sure I was doing well with my pregnancy, she brought me some fruit and stuff, but like gave me a hug and a kiss on the cheek. And I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> my, my house is infected now. I have the coronavirus. <laughs> I'm being super paranoid. Um, where I am in the world is not uh, a densely populated place, but I am on the West Coast. I'm not too far from Vancouver, which is very densely populated, lots of Chinese immigrants. So, I mean, potentially I could have the coronavirus. I'm hoping not, though. Um, hi, Jordan. I'm happy you made it for, live, for the live stream, too. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying my channel. Um... Dark side of the moon or wish you were here. Oh, that's really hard, dude. That's a really like, that's like Sophie's choice. <laughs> um, I'm going to go wish you were here because when me and my husband were long distance uh, in the beginning of our relationship, we used to play that song and be really dorky and miss each other. <laughs> uh, vitamin D3. Yes. Take your vitamin D3. I've doubled up on my dosage of d vitamin D3 as of late. Vitamin C. I literally took vitamin C before I started my stream. 
elderberries 100 i ordered a bunch of um elderberry supplements on amazon a few days ago along with a huge other haul of things um trying to get some supplies in while i can because i think things are going to be running out pretty soon um, and you know, I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not like panic buying things that I'm not going to eventually use all of the things that I have purchased, uh, for my stockpile and for my prepping have been things that really I should have had in my house anyway. It's just that where I've been pregnant and you know, this, this isn't my, I, I'm not a homeowner right now. This is a place that I'm renting. So we don't have tons of storage We're we're going to be moving to a new place probably within the next six months. So hunkering down and like getting a prep um stockpile sorted wasn't on the top of mine and my husband's priorities but now because of this sort of looming potential need for it we're like okay well there's no better time than now to just get it done and we've been prepping for weeks um so yeah it feels good to have quite a bit of those things either on the way or stockpiled get proper sleep 100 percent. i mean anything that's going to keep your immune system functioning properly like those 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 are the things that are going to really protect you from you know you know vi the virus or in the very least if you contract the virus it'll it'll give you a good chance of fighting it off because i mean young young people don't seem to have the same death rate as older people but even even lots of older people who are healthy have been recovering just fine from the coronavirus uh, let me make sure i'm not missing anyone here uh, I'm looking very well. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I feel very pregnant. I'm in my ninth month now. I'm not going to tell you exactly what week I'm in, but baby could come anytime. Um, wait, I think I missed some here. I am not Dr. Lee. Do, if you guys don't know who Dr. Lee is, do a little gur Google, a gurgle, <laughs> a Google search of Dr. Lee. There's some conspiracy surrounding Dr. Lee. Um, he was one of the first doctors in Wuhan who um, was kind of ringing the alarm, sounding the alarm about how contagious the virus is in terms of person to person contact and exposure via like aerosol dolls, meaning like just breathing in the vicinity of a sick person or droplets. And he was kind of demonized by the government and by the police. I think he was even arrested for a short time as being uh, an alarmist and spreading unnecessary panic. And of course, um, if you know what ended up happening, he, um, he, he said he was care careless with one of his older patients. Um, and against his better judgment, wasn't wearing a mask. I think while treating that person, and what he be what he what he thought happened was that he was exposed via aerosols, meaning just like breath, basically, um, and contracted the virus and died. So pretty tragic story. Um, he's become kind of like you know an internet hero among the people who have been following this closely from the beginning because he was one of the first people who was like, "This is not." The flu, guys, this is kind of more serious. And um, yeah, he he died in service to patients who are suffering. So uh, definitely worth your while to do a little Google search about Dr. Lee and what happened to him. Um, hi, Tigger Kilam. Nice to see you. Corona Chan hates communism and Islam. Whole boat of boomers just got the sniffles. Coup for freedom. <laughs> uh, what? What if soy makes you immune to coronavirus? Well, then you eat soy, I guess. Like I said, I like tofu. I actually, like, I enjoy eating tofu. Um, I used to be a vegetarian and stuff. So, like, I used to eat it on a regular basis in my early 20s. How is midday sun around your parts? Uh, I mean, as good as it could be. It's, I'm pretty far north. So, uh, the sun's going to be setting in a few hours. Uh, midday. I mean, it's been real sunny here lately. Uh, the we the weather has been cold, but we've been getting lots of sun, which is great. Uh, do I know who Riley Reed is? No, um, don't know. How many children do you plan on having? Um, it's it's obviously up to the Lord, right? Like, however I however many I'm blessed with, I'm not going to be preventing um, preventing. 
um, ha getting pregnant unless I'm in that period after pregnancy where it could be damaging to my health to get pregnant too soon after giving birth, you know, and if you don't wait enough time for your um, nutrients and your health to build back up after birth, you can be far more um, at risk for miscarriage. So I will be giving myself time to heal in between pregnancies, of course, but um, assuming, you know, I'm in good health and it's safe for me to be getting pregnant, I'm going to be trying to have as many kids as possible. You know, I'm hoping I'm hoping for three, like if I can have three children, that would be the biggest blessing in the whole world. My husband's like, how about 10? <laughs> but you know, we're, we're going to try and keep it realistic. <laughs> uh, lots of Chinese in Vancouver, but I'm probably fine. I hope so. <laughs> uh, my favorite YouTube channels. I have a lot of favorite YouTube channels. I love Black Pigeon Speaks because um, there's just such a variety of really well-produced content over there. I really like his perspective. I find him to be very balanced. He's, you know, not extreme in one way or another. And I just really enjoy his content. Um, my con the, the content that I watch actually switches up a lot. Black Pigeon Speaks is one of the ones I've been watching for like ever. Um, who else do I really like watching? Oh, it's one of those things that always, you know, like your mind goes blank when someone asks you what your favorite music is and stuff. I've been watching a lot of like mom content since I got pregnant. Like my, my, the content that I watch since I got pregnant has changed dramatically from political to more lifestyle. Um, I really like a, a girl called Sarah's Day. She's kind of like a, f a fitness mom. She's Christian really high quality content, lots of like nutrition and health stuff. Um, she's also doing like a renovation on her home. So it's like very like girly. I, I really love Sarah's day. I think that's a fantastic channel. Um, I also really like, um, oh my gosh, it's so bad that I can't remember anyone actually here. Let's just like quickly go to my sub feed because that's the easiest way that I can tell you. Um, without me having to rely on my very shoddy pregnancy memory. So um, I love American Renaissance. Um, who else? Brave the World, I love. Brittany Selner, I love. Computing Forever is great. Danger Field. Um, uh, Dr. Edward Dutton, I watch on a regular basis. Farmhouse on Boone is another um, like Christian lifestyle channel where the lady talks a lot about like homemaking and homekeeping and food and raising children, that kind of stuff, which I really, really enjoy. Uh, Justin Rhodes, he's a homesteader uh, who lives in, I actually can't remember what state he's in. But he's, he has a great family-oriented channel that he talks a lot about growing food and taking care of animals. Um, Lopke's Life, which is another lifestyle mom channel. Mama Natural, she focuses a lot on pe pregnancy. Um, Millennial Woes, I love for political content. Nikki Philippi for her day in the life videos, as well as What I Eat in the Day. Uh, videos are really, really great. Sarah Therese, another Christian mom lifestyle person. Um, I like some of Steve Franson's commentary on stuff. Uh, who else? The Red Elephants is great. Uh, the Iconoclast, Laura Towler, Way of the World. Um, Black Pilled, I don't want to forget Black Pilled, Blonde to the Belly of the Beast. Um, yeah, E. Michael Jones, Faith Goldie. She hasn't made a, much content in a really long time, though. Uh, Jill Colton, Philosoph uh, Philosophicat, Lindsay Shepard, Mr. Um, Medicare. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that should be probably a good window uh, into really graceful. I don't want to miss anyone. I like Rouge's content, um, Survive the Jive. Uh, Nick Fuentes. I used to watch Nick Fuentes before the Groiper War thing started more intensely, but it since things have become like a little bit more crazy, I guess. And he's been doing a lot more um, 
a lot more content that's like on the ground, uh, I've kind of like lost uh, lost my um, my rhythm with watching his show on a more regular basis. Um, also, Peak Prosperity is someone that I found recently. He has been following um, the coronavirus and making daily updates, which I have been so enjoying. Uh, his content is really well done. He's very reasonable. Um, really interesting content. If you're looking for like user created uh, takes on what's happening with the coronavirus, I would very highly recommend the channel Peak Prosperity. So that was a lot. Sorry, it took a long time. I'm probably really behind in the chat now. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Which main supplies did I get for my haul? So I have um, toilet paper, obviously, water, uh, lighters, duct tape, uh, first aid supplies, vitamin supplementation. Um, I even got uh, a new water filter from Infowars.com. <laughs> I looked at the prices of like different types of water filters. Uh, I was going to go with the Berkey, but... The Berkey, the Berkey is the best. The Berkey is the best, but it's also the most expensive. And when you compare what it does to something like the Alexa, the Alexa Pure, which is the one that Alex Jones sells, the difference is so minimal. I think the the main the main thing that makes the Alexa Pure not quite as good is that it doesn't take lead out. I think it's like instead of 199.9% of lead removed, it's 96.4. And I think lead exposure in your water is actually something that's a little bit more common in urban areas um, where you have like really old pipes in like city, city residential areas where I am right now, like that's not an issue. So I went for supporting uh, Alex Jones in the info war and got, got myself an Alexa pure, which I'm really excited, <laughs> really, really excited to receive my water filter from the hum, the humble water filter salesman, Alex Jones himself. Um, soap, we stocked up, stocked up on all kinds of different types of like bars of soap, hand soap, hand, hand sanitizer, like uh, laundry detergent, those kind of things. Garbage bags, like heavy duty garbage bags can be very multi-use. Um, you can use them for, you know, like, you know, as a, as like a covering with duct tape, if you have to. Um, we also got, um, my husband got like some face masks. He found some like reasonably priced face masks with like filters on them, um, which it's not just for flu. It's for like smoke and um, air pollution. And like, it's like a multi-use mask. It's not just like a medical mask. It's like kind of like a, a full on, like a apocalypse, apocalypse style mask. Uh, he, he got them for a really good deal. So he was just like, screw it. I want these. Um, we have um, stocked up on things like rope. Um, obviously food, like the foods, the food things that we've stocked up on are like beans, pulses, lentils, grains, flowers, um, condensed and fortified milk. So like condensed milk, which has been fortified with vitamin C and D, um, whey protein powders. Um, what else? did we get? Oh, I got lots of like Annie's organic pasta. Cause that's like one of my comfort foods and it's like easy. <laughs> I got a bunch of mac and cheese. Plus also, um, so I'm an affiliate of my Patriot supply, which is like prepper food. Um, if you want to get some food from that company, I think the wait time at this point is like six to eight weeks because people have been buying emergency food. Um, you know, for weeks now in preparation for potential food shortages. So I'll shoot the link. Like the link is like, if you want to buy from me, it's www.preparewithcc, as in CC. I'll just like put it in the chat. Preparewithcc.com. You can go to that website and you can get discounts on um, prepper food. So I have like a two week supply of uh, prepper food that has like oats. We bought tons of oats as well. Jams, preserves, tinned peaches. Um, so that's like kind of the food stuff. 
aside from maybe a few other things that I might be forgetting. Um, we bought lighters and things for starting a fire. Um, yeah, lots of supplements. We bought the silver supplement that's like immune boosting as well as elderberry supplements, um, tons of vitamin C, vitamin D. Like we're, I'm a, I'm a vitamin person anyway, but with me and my husband are big on supplementation. So we have a huge cabinet filled with supplements that we take anyway, but we just stocked up on the things that we know we're either going to run low on or could, we could run out of, I think that's mostly it. Like I haven't been like hoarding, you know, like I don't have space for that. I think hoarding is kind of unethical. I do have enough for me and my family for about three months, potentially a little longer than that, depending on how we ration, which I think is more than enough to deal with any looming threat, which could potentially um, affect me uh, in this part of the world where I am. So I, I'm not trying to like spread panic here. Like don't panic, just prepare. Like being prepared is you know, something that you can do calmly if you're smart and you're wise and you do it in advance. Um, it's not something where you should be like, you know, freaking out, you know, run, running to the store and taking so much of things that you're actually affecting your, your community and your neighborhood negatively. A responsible adult prepares in a way which, you know, benefits himself and doesn't take away from his neighbors and his community. So, um, you know, I think we are kind of getting down to the wire in terms of um, how much time we have to responsibly prepare. I wouldn't hesitate any longer. If you're on the fence about this, just go out and get yourself some like staple bulk items that you know you're going to use anyway, um, just to give yourself some peace of mind so that you're not like in a desperate situation in a month from now and like considering robbing your neighbor. <laughs> for survival purposes. That's, that's what I would, I would suggest. Um, Sid Barrett, sorry, I wish you were here was about Sid Barrett. <laughs> Not my husband, really. <laughs> that, um, oh, darn. I think I, oh, God, I lost my place again. Hold on. Let me go back up here. I'm not, I'm not, um, monitoring the chat very well. I've kind of lost my place. Sorry if I have missed anyone here. So let's see. U.S. military expecting more than 1 million deaths. Yes, Owen, um, I've heard that. Based on the stats that I've heard from different medical professionals and like pathologists and stuff who are online talking about this, they're saying they're lowballing at a 1% death rate, meaning like, you know, if 80% of America gets the virus and 1% of that dies, you're looking at 1.5, maybe 2 million deaths potentially, uh, which is a lot of people. Uh, and I think that's a low ball number actually. So um, it's serious business, this coronavirus. It's not the flu. It's because of the asymptomatic um, incubation period. It makes contracting the virus from person to person that much easier because if you don't know you're sick, then you're not going to be quarantining yourself and then also the other aspect is that it's not just droplets, like it's not just sneeze or spit. That could that could be the transmission. It could be aerosols as well, meaning literally just breathing in the vicinity of a person who is um, contagious could uh, cause spread. So it's 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 serious, you know, especially when you're talking about like how bad it can be for people who already have either compromised immune systems or for the elderly. Like it's. I think it's very selfish and irresponsible to not take this seriously because just because someone's old or has a compromised immune system doesn't make them more expendable as a member of society. And just because you might not have those things, you know, I'm healthy, I have a good immune system. That doesn't mean that, you know, I'm just going to like not care about the fact that there are other people out there who could be very um, seriously affected by this. Um, Thoughts on Justin Trudeau? Like, you know, I actually don't think about Justin Trudeau. He's not worth my time to think about. He's an idiot. Uh, he is like, he's the epitome of like how politicians are actors. He's like a bad actor. <laughs> he's like, he's like drama, teacher, tear, bad actor. 
Um, he's just, an, he's a buffoon. He's the worst prime minister that I think has probably ever existed in the Western world. Like, never mind just Canada. This guy, he's an absolute embarrassment. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, antiseptic hand washer. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that. Also, if you uh, want to sort of do something that could be a little bit more cost effective because the price of uh, hand sanitizer is a bit more than just like your standard soap, or you could, you could buy bleach and dilute it. Bleach is a good, um, cleaner, which disinfects really well. Uh, you can do it on household services in a safe way as long as it's diluted properly. And it's like, it's cheaper to do it that way to last you longer than just buying some um, cleaning products. Always buy things you can rotate when you prep, unless it's long-term 25 years storable food. Exactly. That's exactly right. Um, let's see, where are we? Drink Lysol. Do not drink Lysol. <laughs> Um, here in Brazil, we have the Zika virus. Yeah, that's really scary. Um, hope, hope you aren't affected by that. Which is worse of a cesspool, Twitter or Facebook? Oh God. <laughs> well, Twitter is like more aggressive. It's like more aggressively a cesspool. Like people are meaner to each other. Um, the sort of the, the badness in people I think is more easily brought out on Twitter. Uh, there's like a more of a reactive quality to Twitter, which I think is really, um, pardon me. It's like really, it's just really toxic. It's, it's not good for you. It's not good for your heart, not good for your spirit. I think to be on Twitter for, you know, extended periods of the day, you know, I think it can be really damaging to people's mental health. Um, Facebook is just cringe. Facebook is just like full of like cursed boomer posting, um, it's a very uh, liberal dominated face uh, 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 platform, Facebook, but I mean, Twitter is too. So I don't know. I don't actually use Facebook. Like I have an anonymous Facebook account that I use for checking out what is being sold in like the buy and sell and secondhand products in my local area. And there's like no personal information. And it's like a fake name. That's what I use Facebook for. Uh, so it's been a long time since I've actually seen the state of Facebook, to be honest, I would, I would advise like not even really logging on. Like, is there anything going on on Facebook that's worth being aware of at this point? I highly doubt it. Uh, the title is in reference to a film, Dr. Strange, over how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. Exactly. Uh, it is a reference to that. Um, I have been worried. <laughs> I've been worried about the Corona Chan thing, but you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person who always tries to find the good in things. I'm always trying to practice gratitude daily for everything in my life, good and bad. That is my personal uh, way of communing with God and making sure that uh, I am humble and I'm not missing lessons that uh, God is giving me on the daily. And so something that I've been trying to like process is I'm about to have my first child um, and there's the potential, no matter how small that I could be in quarantine in a month or two, uh, with a newborn. And so it's been a real challenge for me <clears throat> to find a way to be grateful for the current situation, um, with the coronavirus thing, but I think I've managed it. I'm really good at finding a way to be grateful for things, even if they're bad. And if nothing happens and all of my concern and worry is for nothing, which I really hope is the case. Uh, I would love for my concerns about this to be unwarranted. Um, I now have my, I have my, you know, basic stockpile of prep uh, done, which I'm extremely grateful for. I don't think that I realized how unprepared I was in the event of an emergency. Um, until I really started to consider the potential outcome of what could happen if I was, you know, quarantined in my house for two or three months uh, with a baby. So now I'm very, very prepared, which I feel like, you know, that taught me a lesson in my own, um, you know, neglect or being irresponsible as an adult um, and taking care of myself and my family. Like that was a bit of a wake up call, which I'm very grateful for. Um, 
Also, I bought a bunch of like rye flour, <laughs> like um, spelt flour, and I'm going to start learning how to make bread. That's something that I've been putting off for years. My grandma uh, made bread for me and my siblings when we were growing up. And I like very seldom, like I, I've, I don't think I really ever ate store-bought bread when I was growing up. So I was very blessed to have a grandma who was constantly making fresh bread for us as children. Um, and I want my children to have that experience too, to have really nice, high quality, traditionally made bread. So I thought, you know, bread and flowers and all those, that, like that's a good skill to have in a quarantine situation. Bread is very good for you. It has like a decent shelf life and what, once it's made and flour, you know, will last you years if it's stored properly. So I got all the things that I need to make bread, which is something I've been procrastinating. So I'm grateful for the kick in the arse to start making bread again, <laughs> or, or just to, to learn how to make bread <laughs> uh, for the first time. So things like that, you know, I'm just trying to, just trying to be grateful. I'm trying to, um, trying to not focus on the negative, I guess, um, which is not easy to do in the world that we're currently living in. I have decided on a name. Uh, but I'm not going to announce it until the baby's born. Um, let's see. Um. <laughs> I don't only like Black Pigeon Speaks because he's a fellow leaf. That's one of the many reasons why I like Black Pigeon Speaks. I think he's a fantastic uh, content creator, consistently fantastic um, content creator who makes really interesting stuff on a wide variety. You know, he's not like a one trick pony. He has a wealth of knowledge and really good takes on a bunch of really like a widespread uh, list of things. Let's see. Nikki just had a beautiful baby boy. Oh my God. Nikki's baby is like, that baby is so cute. Like he has such a perfect little face. I feel like he, he really looks like his dad a lot. And she's just like absolutely killing the new mom game. She has like, she looks amazing. <laughs> she's bounced back really well. She's like cooking loads. She's yeah, she's just killing it. Uh, good list of creators. <clears throat> Question. Do you believe for a God? I do believe in God. Yes. Um, Amran for the win, sweetie Scott, sweetie, sweetie squad rise up. Blonde needs to make more content. She's real pregnant, guys. You know, you got you got to give us pregnant ladies a break. JF is good. I don't watch all of his content. JF's one of those creators as well, like similar to Black Pigeon Speaks, where he makes content on such a wide range of topics um, that I find myself gravitating more towards certain streams than others. JF did a, a stream, I think yesterday with a lady called Miriam something. She's like a, um, not conspiracy theorist, but she kind of, she, she floats in the alternative viewpoint circles. Let's just say that. And I found it really interesting. He did a great job with that interview with Miriam and, um, I subscribed to Miriam afterwards. So I, I do watch JF. But I don't watch all of his streams. Some of his content, um, it doesn't appeal to me because I don't like have any background in some of the content that he talks about. But I do, I do enjoy some of JF's content for sure. Um, what separates Groypers from Conservative Inc? I don't know. Like I like Groypers. <laughs> like m my husband was a Groyper uh, when I'm. I like encountered him for the first time, but like this was like back in 2017, 17, like, or the beginning of 2018. And Groypers were something very different back then than what they are now. So when I think about Groypers, I think about like cozy posting and like, like being really like sarcastic and um, just like what it used to be like memes and like really sort of wholesome wholesome reactionary content that, you know, isn't super extreme. Now Groypers are kind of, it's like, um, I guess they're, they're irony. They're the irony bros, right? There, there still is that element of sarcasm, but it's more edgy. It's more youthful. It's more, um, you could say it's more energetic because there's an, a real life 
there's a real life component to what the gro groypers are now. They're like a they're a movement of young men, and conservative ink is just conservative ink. Like it's it's just a bunch of people who are essentially like they're Democrats 30 years ago. They're not even conservative. They have no conception of what conservatism actually is. Um, a lot of their social opinions in terms of politics, they're just liberal. They're like, at best, they're libertarians. At worst, they're just um, liberals in MAGA hats. It's quite depressing, if you ask me, um, the state of conservative ink. Uh, let's see. Love my glasses. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, yeah, I just couldn't, I couldn't bear to put contacts in today. I just wanted to keep it low key and be comfy. Just, you know, a comfy, cozy stream. Uh, Berkey water filter. Yeah, Berkey is the best um, in terms of, like, ability to remove bacteria, harmful contaminants, heavy metals, um, anything that would make your water impure in some way. It's it's just really expensive. Like, it's twice the price of the Alexa Pure. And for my purposes, the Alexa Pure does... It's just fine. Uh, do I watch Murdoch Murdoch? I've seen I've seen some Murdoch Murdoch episodes before. They're really funny and they're really edgy. Like some of the some of the content that's made by Murdoch Murdoch makes me just like a tiny bit uncomfortable because it's like so full on. But I think um, Murdoch Murdoch is uh, it's one of the only real like proper, like really right wing art artistic um, ventures. You know, like there isn't a lot of art and culture that happens on the right. And I think that's something that really holds us back from spreading our ideas to youth and um, just sort of like, you know, creating momentum because art and culture is, it's an essential part of any political movement. And it's something that the left really um, excels at. It's, it's one of our weaknesses. Um, I don't agree with everything that I've seen on Murdoch Murdoch. I don't laugh at every joke that I've seen from Murdoch Murdoch. But I think that they are a valuable component in the node of right-wing content creators. And I think for myself, um, I just appreciate that there are people who are creative, like really creative and artistic and genuinely quite funny and not afraid to, to say really edgy things like Murdoch Mur Murdoch out there, even if it's not, you know, always going to be my cup of tea. Um, like they, they, I think they, they kind of like, they, they, they're not super into Christianity. I think they're kind of more pagan ish or like Indo-European culture uh, in terms of like, if they, if they do have a spirituality component to their belief system, which would be different from me. Right. But, and I think they even make, they make fun of Christians a lot and, you know, yeah. Can you blame them? There's a lot of like embarrassing stuff going on uh, within the Christian community, which is very undermining of, um, you know, nationalism. So I understand that, but like, so I'm not fully like, yeah, Murdoch, Murdoch is my favorite thing ever, but like I have enjoyed like one of their one of their um, episodes, that I think was my favorite, was called "The Last Son of the West," which that was a masterpiece. That was one of the best one of the best like uh, animation right wing animations that I've ever seen. Um, I am aware of countercurrents. There are some people who um, produce articles from countercurrents that I enjoy reading. Not everyone is my cup of tea, but I definitely am aware of countercurrents. Scan Scanza forum. I'm less aware of. I can look into it though. Uh, I don't know who Jonathan Bowden is. Um, let's see. What's wrong with you, Weebs? Hit the like button. <laughs> um, hydrogen per peroxide to put on your toilet paper to clean up a bit better. Okay, that's a tip for you guys. Um, cheers, I love your channel. Thank you, Eki Lux Livestreams. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that right. 
yes, please like this stream if you're enjoying this little casual chat. Probably only going to be here for another 20 minutes or so hanging out. Um, please share the link, like, leave a comment, whatever. If you're enjoying it, it, it that, that kind of interaction really does help my channel get recommended and stuff. So um, it's a really simple way that you can support more content like this and let me know that what I'm doing is you know, interesting to you guys in some way, because sometimes it's hard to gauge whether or not people are actually enjoying this kind of a thing. We've got 134 people in here right now. Wow. That's more than last time. That's really cool. Um, thanks to everyone who's been hanging out. Gas the car boogaloo now. Okay. So that reminds me, we also got, um, two, two, I can't remember how many we got. We got like a bunch of those like 10 or 20 liter jerry cans for gas um, just to have on hand. Uh, one will be like living in the back of the car in case we need it or we encounter someone who needs it. And then we'll have one stored at home. Always a good, um, good thing to have some extra gas on hand for sure. <sighs> Let's see. Canada has left its people to prepare on their own. That's true. Hi, Miss Jess Horst. Lovely to see you in the chat. I took the last uh, to red marine algae. Okay. Um, however, I let them know and they put in the computer right away to restock. So I don't have uh, red marine algae, but what I do have is spirulina. I have a lot of spirulina power, which is like a superfood. Um, superfood powder. It's like a green powder. You can add to smoothies and stuff. And it's like, it tastes like algae. It tastes like grass. Like it tastes gross. It's really bad, but it's full of essential vitamins and nutrients. Um, another superfood powder that I keep on hand a lot is uh, raw cacao, which is full of magnesium and minerals and stuff. And like, you can throw it in with your protein powder and it makes like your protein shakes all the more chocolatey. It's really yummy. Uh, cough. It's just the flu bro. Shake my hand. You can watch it later. Yeah. Like the, the, the lack of even considering the potential for this to be something quite bad is really shocking to me. Like people, people really want to be comforted by thinking that all of this stays uh, my friend Lou, uh, her her at on Twitter is Lou in Alaska. She makes uh, great Twitter content. She made a video not that long ago, and she was just talking about how it's so crazy how people think that modern life and the comforts of modern life are permanent. You know, like people really think that all of this is just here to stay because we've had like what 50, 50 to eighty years of relative stability in Western societies and people are just like, yeah, this lasts forever. You know, I don't need to, <laughs> I don't need to prepare for potential, um, potentially bad things or emergencies happening. It's just so naive and people get really aggressive and defensive when you bring up the necessity of preparing. And I think that's because people are so, they're so weak. They're so weak um, because of how comfortable life is. Um, and they're so attached to their like consumer lifestyle where it's like consume product, enjoy product, consume next product. Like that's, that's like their, their, like, that's their identity basically. Um, and it's like addicting, you know, there's a compulsive element to that, you know, probably like smoking weed all of the time. And like, like that very millennial lifestyle, when there's even the potential questioning of the of the reality that that doesn't last forever, that we live in very unstable, chaotic times, and um, all of this can be gone in a heartbeat. It makes them angry because it's like that's that's their um, what's the right way to put it? It's that's that that's their addiction, you know, is the 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 comforting lifestyle of modernity. Um, 
and to yeah to to bring it up to them that it may not last forever it just makes them makes them scared i think and that makes them react very defensively and with anger it's not cool get nappies and wipes yeah i have i have that and i'm in the process of making a large order from my local maternity shop on cloth diapering because cloth diapers are better for the environment. They're better for my baby and they don't, I don't run out of them. I just have to wash them, which is not a fun thing to think about, but I think it's the best option for my family. I do have some disposables on hand though, for sure. Um, I'm 55. I have a bad immune system. I'm prepped, but worried. Don't consider me expendable, please. Yeah, exactly. I don't get this like this thing that people are like, oh, it's just old people. It's just people who are already sick who are going to be uh, affected by this. So why should I care? I just can't comprehend that level of self-absorption. People who are like, yeah, okay, well, there's the boomer meme where it's like, you know, okay, boomer, you know, you're annoying and you've done all these bad things. So we're going to be hard on boomers. Like I get that meme, but at the same time, like you can't just look at a whole age demographic of your society as expendable. And it's really messed up. I think that we in the West look at our elders and we look at our older generations as being so expendable in many other cultures, people who are, um, you know, older and wiser, uh, they're the most respected. You know, they even have like honorifics in their language where you speak to them differently out of respect for their age. And that's something that's totally lost on, you know, North Americans, I think. And it's a really sad thing. I'm happy, uh, Binks, Way Belf, that you're prepped. Uh, don't worry too much. If you're prepped, I'm sure you'll be just fine. You're not expendable. Uh, people who have compromised immune systems and who are older are not expendable, in my opinion, whatsoever. And it's disgusting to hear people um, make comments like they are. Vinegar is a good, definitely a good option. Uh, no White Guild has a great stream after this, of course, if you haven't been there, check it out. Uh, I'm not a huge fan, not, not really a fan at all of No White Guild's streams. It's not, it doesn't appeal to me. I have nothing against the guy as a person. I wish him all the success in the world. It's just, it's not my scene. It's not my thing. It doesn't appeal to me. I don't like, I don't, I just don't like his style of content. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, people need to, need to and should care for the elderly and immunocompromised. I agree. Um, what do I think of drag queen story hour? Come on. You know that this is, <laughs> do you even know me? <laughs> um, I hate drag queen story hour. I don't like necessarily like, like, it's not like a hatred towards drag queens. Like I've been to drag shows before in my early twenties and like been to restaurants where there's like a drag performance, um, but it's adult, right? Like it's in a adult um, like bar setting, you know? Um, and I've seen some drag performances where it's been real funny and it hasn't been like overly, overly sexualized and stuff. And it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's, it is performance art to a degree, but it has its time and place. And this, this like seeping, um, out of the clubs and the sort of seedy underbelly of adult nightlife into libraries and nurseries and kindergarten classes is obscene to me. It's, it's so diabolically horrific and abusive and exploitative of children to be exposing them to such um, adult content, which I don't care what anyone says. It is sexual in nature. Even like the most tame of drag performances do have a sexual element to them. You are performing gender, you're performing fem femininity. Um, that's what it is. It's not like I should, it's not like I think, oh, all drag queens should be like, like rounded up and shipped off to some sort of island or anything like that. It's not that. Like, I think drag has its place in, in, adult culture in nightlife adult culture at like 
venues where you have to have your ID checked at the door. Like that's where that belongs. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't be um, something that children are exposed to in any way, shape or form, in my opinion. Pumpernickel bread. I'll check it out. I've never tried that before. Trying to red pill my new date. Not going well. Take it slow. <laughs> uh, it's not easy to red pill, red pill people. They often have to red pill themselves to some degree before they're even open to red pill ideas. How much longer do you have left until your new baby comes? I don't know. Um, it's up to my baby when he makes his entrance. Um, I don't really take too much weight in due dates. Um, the methods in the medical community for how we determine exactly what your due date is, I think is normally off by a couple weeks. And I think that the due date um, thing is often used as a reason to get women to uh, go to the hospital and be induced before their body is ready to go into labor. I think most, not all women, some women need to be induced. Um, and being induced can be helpful for some women. Um, but I think that there are a lot of natural alternatives for being induced. And you don't always have to go to the hospital to get, you know, to stimulate labor um, if your body isn't going into labor on its own. And I think putting that pressure on you, on yourself about like, I need to be in labor by this date, I think it actually hinders the process. Jay Dyer, I know of Jay Dyer. Jay Dyer I've uh, seen some of his content, but like I haven't, I haven't watched his stuff in a really, really long time. I think he's funny. I like his conspiracy stuff. I think orthodoxy is super interesting and um, is something that I want to look into more. But uh, I, I just, uh, yeah, there's so many content creators out there. Like it's really difficult to keep up with them all. Um, but yeah, I, even though I'm not like a regular viewer of Jay Dyer, I don't have anything against him. JF flagged a bunch of Nick Fuentes' videos. Um, I don't know anything. That doesn't sound right. I don't know. Maybe um, if he did, that sucks. I don't think we should be flagging each other. Um, but didn't JF try to get Nick Fuentes banned from you? I don't really. Um, I'm not aware of that. If, if that's true, then I don't think that that's a good thing. That's, that's really, that's not good. Um, congratulations on the child. God bless. Thank you, Joey Jojo for the a $2 super chat. That's very, very kind of you. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. If JF did that, that sucks. <laughs> I obviously don't agree with like flagging people. Like why would, what would he even flag Nick for, for like, like, don't they have more in common than they don't like, didn't JF and Nick like have interviews and stuff with each other. I thought they were like mutuals. I don't know if you have links about it, I guess, leave it in the comments. I don't know. Like I'm not really keeping up to date with a lot of the Groiper and Nick Fuentes drama stuff, but like, if that's true, that sucks. And I obviously don't agree with like flagging each other over like hate speech or like TOS stuff. Um, let's see. Have I read the blog? Unqualified Reservations by Mencius Moldbug. It's really good. I haven't, but um, I don't have a pen next to me. I'll go back into the chat later and check it out. <clears throat> oh, my throat's so dry. Hope I don't have the coronavirus. <laughs> Is dry throat a symptom? <laughs> Would I do a J. Dyer Q&A to learn about orthodoxy? Sure. Yeah, I think I follow him. I haven't like, you know how you follow people, but you don't always see their their tweets in your timeline very often. I think that's what it's like with Jay. Like maybe he's shadow banned or something, but I don't see his content on Twitter very often. I'm sure I'm subscribed to him, uh, but he doesn't pop up in my feed very often. So I haven't even thought of Jay in a really long time. I haven't seen his content in my feed, but if it was something he wanted to do, which I highly doubt, like why is he going to waste his time like trying to get me to learn about orthodoxy. If he sends it, if he sent out an invitation or if he requested to be on my channel to have a conversation about, it, I would absolutely be open to having a conversation with him about orthodoxy. Like I said, it's something that I'm really interested in uh, and I'm very open to. Uh, let's see. 
What do we got here? It's not even a conspiracy. JF bragged about it. Really? <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know, guys. That's that's crazy. If JF flag, JF insulted Fuentes insulted JF's family, so JF got him banned. Well, I mean, if you're gonna. Guys, I don't want to get involved in this drama. Like, I have nothing against uh, Nick Fuentes or JF personally. Um, if there's drama between them, then that sucks because to me, they are close enough in, you know, op opinions and content that, you know, it would be better, I think, if they were kind of mutuals and supporting one another. But dang, if that's true. That's some drama that somehow I, I must be under a rock. I completely miss that. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, so I think I'm caught up with the chat now, which is great. <laughs> and I'm going to be, I'm going to be signing off pretty soon guys. So if you have any more questions, throw them in the chat while I'm still here. Hi Robin. Will you have Elizabeth's philosophy on girl talk? I spoke with Elizabeth's philosophy a couple years ago. Um, she is a lovely girl. Um, I remember enjoying her content a long time ago. I'm not a fan of her husband sticks. Um, find him extremely cringe and I have made fun of sticks on several occasions on Twitter because he's just, he's just so cringe. I really don't like Styx's content and I can't listen to him because his voice is so nasally. Um, and I just find him to be like, I think he, I feel like he's really, uh, his personality is so off putting to me. Um, and so because of that, like, because of me, like making fun of him, like he was like posting, he was posting like pictures on Twitter of like literal in our Twitter, Twitter prostitutes, like wearing his merch and stuff and being like, you know, porn is good. Like I, I, I'm in support of porn or whatever. And I made fun of him for that. I was like, dang, like that's cr like so cringe. Like you have a beautiful Dutch blonde feminine wife and you're posting this on the timeline, like cringe dude. That's disgraceful. And to be like making light of how damaging pornography is for young people, uh, men and women and society at large is something that I have zero time for. So I made fun of him about that and he blocked me. <laughs> so I doubt that Elizabeth's philosophy would be permitted to be a guest on um, Girl Talk, but I'm not opposed to it. I think she's a lovely girl and I think she deserves better personally. I'm not afraid to say that because I do think that she deserves better. Um, where are we? Oh God, the chat has once again gotten away from me. Oh God, where am I? I completely lost my place. Um, bank teller sneezed into her hand and then handed my paperwork. So glad I carry hand sanitizer. Gross. Man, honestly, at this stage in the game, I probably would have asked for her to throw that away and to reprint it because that's disgusting. And, you know, politeness has no place when we're talking about a contagious um, virus. I know I'm, I'm weak. I am a sucker for being polite in social situations, but I'm not going to contaminate myself to avoid a, a, an awkward situation. Um, there's a, she says she likes Varg on Twitter one time. Uh, I don't dislike Varg. I don't agree with everything he says. Um, but I do like my, my husband loves Varg. He, my, hu my husband thinks Varg has some great takes. Um, and we really like his sort of like, um, back to Eden style of gardening where you kind of just, you know, cultivate your land to be a, a year long garden, right? Where you have things that grow back every year without too much maintenance. We really love that style of gardening and hope that we can have property and we can do uh, it ourselves someday. How many people do you think will get Corona Chan standing in line for Super Tuesday voting? A lot. I think that these uh, political events and uh, political gatherings are going to be a hotbed of spread for the virus. Like all of the numbers with regard to um, how many people have contracted the virus and how many people are in serious, serious cr or critical condition, 
lol critical condition um I'm, I'm laughing because that used to be my channel name not because people are in critical condition sorry i just want to clarify that um i think these numbers are really being lowballed massively massively lowballed um not just because i think medical professionals and government officials don't have a clear picture as to what's going on with the virus yet um uh, but because they don't want to spread panic and they um are trying to keep it keep it contained so that you know the economy doesn't get um run into the ground which is a very as it's a very real possibility with with the management of a pandemic right the economy will be affected there have been factories in china that haven't been running for weeks like our dependency on chinese manufacturing is so extensive that when the inventory in north america starts to get very low we are going to be experiencing serious economic um effects as a result of all this and, and some of that's already visible in the stock market right now so um yeah like i've said before the the asymptomatic in long incubation period makes the r not very high in this case meaning for like the r not is for every one person that it has uh, the coronavirus, how many people will they infect, right? So for um, for a comparison like SARS, for example, had an incubation period of, I think, three to four days um, and um, a contagious period of up to seven. And then that made the r not roughly two, I think. I'm really sorry if those numbers aren't completely accurate. You can Google these things. Um, I think that's, that's pretty accurate. So SARS, for example, um, you could catch it easily. You could, what people were showing, um, can there, um, signs of being infected fairly early, meaning you could contain them and keep them away from other people, um, preventing further ex further spread to other people right with this virus because you don't have the symptoms you don't know you're sick but you're still contagious the spread per person who is infected is much larger i've heard some people say that the r not is four um because it's still early days it could potentially be up to seven meaning that you know for every one person at these political events who has an asymptomatic contraction of the coronavirus, which is very possible. Like we already know that the coronavirus is in the United States and has been spreading for weeks already because of the air travel that, you know, hasn't been stopped from China. Um, potentially, potentially worst case scenario, up to seven people could be infected by that one person. Like, think about that. The, these, the, the fact that the coronavirus is sort of coinciding with um, an election year is just really bad timing. It's really bad timing and it makes me think, you know, I don't want to go, okay, let's go full conspiracy mode for a second. Um, there is an institute of virology in Wuhan, which um, has done a ton of uh, research uh, into like human coronaviruses and stuff. And there are some theories about like, what are the chances of that? That the place where the outbreak um, was first, um, where, the, where, the where it originated is the same location where you have like a state of the art. Um, I think it was built by the French um, possibly. Um, during the SARS situation, but like, so Wuhan is where the outbreak happened. And it's also where this like Institute of Virology, which specifically um, is focusing on human coronavirus. Like people are speculating that this is a bioweapon for that reason. And if there was, if there was a way to kind of um, potentially sow hysteria, um, crash the uh, economy, cause people to be in a state of panic and for society to be in a state of chaos and disorder um, for the purpose of destabilizing American politics, which I do think that, that the globalists have an incentive to do. 
you know, biological warfare is one of the many options to, to make that happen. So, I mean, <laughs> it's a conspiracy, right? Like I like engaging with the potential possibility of conspiracies being real. And I like, I like the thought experiment of conspiracies and stuff like that. I'm not going to say how much I think that this is a reality. Like it's kind of irrelevant. We don't, we don't know. We can't know. Um, what the real truth is, but I do think that, it, that it's possible that it could have been created in a lab and that um, there's something far more sinister going on with regard to the origin of the coronavirus than what, what the, you know, World Health Organization would have us believe. Definitely. And there's also like that theory about the, um, the Korean cult where um, they all intentionally infected themselves and then got on planes around the world, uh, attempting to intentionally uh, infect as many people as possible because their cult leader believes, or no, their, their cult leader told them that he can only make miracles happen during the apocalypse. So they're like spreading, they're like human bioweapons, like spreading the virus around the world. Yeah, the Shinji cult. Yeah. Um, I don't think they released it, but I think there's definitely a possibility that they are responsible for spreading it worldwide um, in the way they did. Uh, so they, they believe that their leader can only create miracles in the event of the apocalypse so that they're, 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 they're spreading it around the world. <laughs> like, it sounds like a movie, right? Like it sounds crazy. It sounds so out there, but I think it's, there's totally a chance that we live in a world where that could happen. Hi, Coach Red Pill. Nice, nice to see you in the chat there. <laughs> um, I definitely think that there's a, p a possibility that that has happened. There was that uh, clip from, I think it was a couple months ago. I don't know if you guys remember it. I saw it circulating on Twitter uh, of the Pope at one of these sort of like large gatherings where he was sort of giving giving speech and interacting with the public. And there was like an Asian woman who like grabbed him, grabbed his arm as he was walking past uh, a crowd of people that had kind of like, they've been sort of petitioned off from his, from his walkway. And she grabbed him and she was kind of like saying something to him and holding his hand and like speaking to him. And he like ripped his hand away or something. And everyone was like, oh, look how, look how rude the Pope is or whatever. But maybe that was one of these like Shinji cult people who was like infecting the Pope. Like, I don't know if you've seen it, but there have been headlines about how the Pope has been sick for the past few days. So I, I think there's like whatever about <laughs> the reality that we are currently in with regard to the coronavirus, I think there's a lot of really interesting conspiracy surrounding the origin and the spread of the virus um, and the timing of the virus, which, which kind of adds like an extra element to what's happening to this whole thing, which I'm like obsessed. Like every single day I tune into peak prosperity and there's another doctor. He's like an English doctor um, I can't remember his name. What's his name? Let's see if I can find it here. Um, because he's worth checking out as well. His name is Dr. Dr. John Campbell on YouTube. He does daily updates as well. Um, focusing on what's happening in Britain. He's been, he's been documenting what's going on for since like January and same with the peak prosperity guy. And if you go back through their log of videos, pretty much all their predictions have come true. So I'm cool with trusting in the very least, um, a little bit, you know, of their predictions. Uh, and yeah, I think it's good to sort of share uh, the users, you know, out there who are making content and spreading their personal takes on the coronavirus, because when you search on Google, you know, coronavirus or something, it's literally just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos of like CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, it, you know, the mainstream media is, and the World Health Organization are coordinating with social media companies to keep the panic low to control the narrative, which also I think is like 
super sketchy. Every single video where anyone's talking about the coronavirus, there's like a banner at the bottom of the video. There probably will be a banner at the bottom of this video um, with a link to the World Health Organization and the official statement that they've given on the subject. And the same is true on Twitter. Like when you search for the hashtag, there's always like a link to like the official World Health Organization um, perspective on this. And I mean, like the World Health Organization, they've completely dropped the ball, in my opinion, with regard to this thing. Like they're like busy wordsmithing and like, oh, we're not going to use the word pandemic anymore for like, why, why? It's uh, it's just because the, there's like, I guess, you know, people associate the word pandemic with a justification for panicking doesn't mean that the word isn't valuable and useful <laughs> like that is what we are moving into right now whether they want to make it an official statement or not you know we have a virus which has spread internationally we're in the pandemic stage whether you want to admit that or not um let's see here guys uh, i'm so thirsty pregnancy makes you so thirsty I confess I'm not watching your channel as much as before because it shifted to a lot of motherhood topics due to your pregnancy. Nothing wrong with that. That's, yeah, that's fine. I knew that my numbers would change and my interaction would change when um, I switched up my content from less political stuff to more mom content. Uh, that was something that I was willing to accept because the thing is, I'm not, I've never made content for views or like, for money or like for a career path. I make the content that I want to make that I'm interested in that makes me happy. And I know that there are going to be ebbs and flows with interaction and with viewership as a result of that. It's something I'm cool with. And if you're not interested in the mom stuff, I totally get it. Like I would never hold that against someone um, for not being interested in watching that kind of stuff if you're a dude. Um, first time watching your stream. So good. Thank you, Mamma Mia. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. Uh, it makes me really happy to have a new person here. We're still at the 130 mark. That's great. I'm I'm so surprised that there's even 100 people who are interested in watching a live stream by me, to be honest. No lives matter. <laughs> sure, I guess. That's kind of funny. Uh, coronavirus will only affect those with the gay gene. 90% of this chat die. <laughs> Cap, what, oh my God. Is the chat degenerating right now? <laughs> I think it might be degenerating. <laughs> uh, cloth nappies are not hard to wash. A good washing powder and your machine will handle everything fine. The other thing that is also helpful is a dryer. Thank you for uh, that bit of encouragement because at the moment, you know, as someone who is very new to all of those things, it's kind of an overwhelming thing to think about. But I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you letting me know that you think it's doable. Bullets. Um, no, like so the thing is, actually, you know what? I'm going to plea the fifth with regard to... Um, self-defense uh, and my prepping with self-defense because I don't think it's wise to talk about that on the internet uh, one way or the other. Obviously, you know, have a means of self-defense, um, but I'm not going to talk about my personal um, set setup or situation online because I just, I think my husband would be not happy with me for doing that. Um. Speaking of drag queens, did you see Lady Mega seething at the new Stone Cross Stone Toss comic? No, I didn't. Um, I think Lady Mega is an interesting character. Um, he was like raised as a Mormon, and now he's like a gay Mega drag queen. Like, <laughs> it's a crazy world we live in that people like this exist at all. But um, I, re I remember catching a short clip of, of Lady Maga talking with the Weekly Sweat guys. And, you know, I think the Weekly Sweat guys are funny. They intimidate me and scare me a little bit because I don't want to I don't want to be in their crossfire. Um, I do find them funny. But I'll, in, in that specific interaction, I came out of it feeling kind of more sympathetic to Lady Maga. Like, I feel like in terms of like Christian conduct, like what I believe is good conduct for a Christian. And, you know, 
we, we can all talk all day long about what how to be a good Christian. We we all fall short of that every single day, me myself included. I'm not trying to talk from, you know, some place of authority on being a great Christian all the time. I am not a great Christian all the time and I don't have Christian behavior 100% of the time. But I felt like in that interaction, I came out of it kind of being like, you know, Lady Maga's not that bad in terms of like his actual his actual like willingness to communicate with people who are, you know, different than him and stuff. And I, I can see the value in it, but it's still like, he's still a drag queen. I'm still like, not going to be like, yeah. Oh, a right wing drag queen. See how like not homophobic I am. Like, I'm not going to be that person because I don't, I don't, I, like I said, I don't think drag queen should be like, you know, um, harmed or we should like, like they don't have a place in society, but it's not something that I'm going to be engaging in. You know, I think it's degenerate at the end of the day. And I do have like a feeling of kind of uneasiness or disgust or kind of revulsion from seeing men in drag. So it's like, it's not really my thing. And no, I didn't see him seething as a result of the Stone Toss comic, but I do like Stone Toss. I find his comments to be really funny. Um, Let's see. Drag queens have their time and place. Oof. Well, okay. Like <laughs> you're not going to have a society without degenerates. Okay. Like degenerates exist. People who do degenerate things, they're, they're always going to be a part of society. Is it better to like give them their space over in the corner away from normal people and children and families and polite society so they can do their thing? Um, so that they at least can feel that they have their own community um, or what, like what's the alternative? What's the alternative? Do we like have laws against men dressing up in drag where you're going to like put someone in jail for wearing a dress and being a freak? Like, I don't know that, that that's kind of, <laughs> I think that's a bit too extreme for me personally. I'd rather just, um, let them have their place and let the division between these sorts of cultures, um, it just be very, very set in stone, right? Like there, there is a line you don't cross in terms of adult performative content that, you know, the LGBTQ want to engage in. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for like, inflicting violence on people for being degenerate, right? Like, I don't believe that that's ethical or moral. Um, and I don't know how you're going to stop them aside from being violent. So um, I would rather give them their own space away from children and from people who find it disgusting. Um, yeah. It's not that I think that like drag queens should be <laughs> front and center in our culture, um, as long as kids aren't around, I still think it's degenerate. I still don't want to personally engage in it. I still think it's totally deviant and not good, in, you know, in any way. Um, but like, I can see, I can see why, you know, some people would maybe find it engaging. Um, am I acquainted with Daisy Cousins? I think... I've seen, I think I saw one of her, is she Australian? I think I saw one of her videos where she was like talking about like being a housewife and traditional femininity and like being against feminism. But that's the only time I've ever seen anything by her. So I'm not acquainted with her. I don't know much about her personally. Um, but she seemed, when I, I remember, if I'm thinking of the right person, I remember thinking like, she's cool or whatever. Um Let's see. Yeah, it is frustrating to see people talking about older and high risk people as an afterthought, Sarah. I think that it's re it, like, honestly, that has really shocked me um, that that's that's an actual take that people have, you know, like. I just I just really don't get that. And I feel sorry that you have been made to feel frustrated by that because it's really messed up that people are having that take like oh well it's not going to affect me so boomer you know it's like it's not going to affect me so who cares it's bizarre that people feel this way um but I, like i said before i think it's related to them just wanting to protect their own little naive bubble that all this stays you know that they get to smoke their weed and they get to 
play their video games and, you know, live in their like little bubble of comfort and modernity and not, none of this changes. Like that's where it comes from. They're self-soothing and they're coping um, about the fact that all of this is fragile. And they, they in order to do that, they sacrifice their morality. And I think that's pretty revealing of the kind of people who say these things. Um, okay, guys, so I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna shut it down here soon in a minute to try to get to the bottom of these questions before too many more roll in. Um, hi, Robin, will you have, oh, we already did that. Um, oh gosh, there's, the chat is really getting away from me. Bruce Jenner, stunning and brave, <laughs> disavow. <laughs> um, shut it down. Okay, I hope I didn't. How to encourage masculine behavior in your man? Ooh, that's not a woman's job to encourage your man to be masculine, like. It's my understanding of masculinity and femininity that the masculine energy is creative, right? Um, it projects out into the world. It is, um, it is an agency type of energy, right? It is a doing energy. It is not something that needs to be coaxed out or curated by women, that's kind of a, that's, that's the problem right now is that men are looking to women, um, for guidance, um, in how to be men, right? Masculinity, um, it's like the sun, right? It projects light and energy out into the world. Uh, feminine energy in my understanding is reflective. And so your job as the feminine energy in, um, a masculine feminine relationship is to reflect the light that your man projects out into the world, right? So your, your masculine partner should be encouraging feminine behavior in you. That's the natural dynamic as far as I'm concerned. And in terms of like my personal um, my, my relationship with my husband, um, I could never encourage my husband to, to be more masculine. Like, um, he is masculine and there's nothing I can do about that. Like, like sometimes I wish that there was something that I could do about that because it's too much. It's like very, um, it can be very difficult, uh, to be with a man who is very masculine and very disagreeable and is very set in his ways. And, um, you know, has his own, has his own methods for doing things and has certain standards for how things are supposed to be done. It can be difficult, but like, that's why I chose him. I trust his, I trust his perspective. I trust, um, the intelligence of his masculinity and his intuition to be the leader of our family. And it's never, ever, it's never backfired letting my husband take the lead. Not once has it really backfired. I think, no, I can't even like I can't even think of one scenario where it's backfired. Um, it's not easy because you have to learn to trust, right? You really have to learn, and that's not easy for us women, especially for women who are neurotic, who are the kind of women who um, think of all the things that can possibly go wrong, right? It's difficult to hand over and let someone else take the lead when you're going through all the potential things that could go wrong that you could pre prevent if you were in control, right? So that's kind of, that's where the masculine is meant to encourage feminine behavior, right? The strong, dominant, capable agent, uh, man who has agency, um, he takes the lead, he takes the responsibility, he delegates, uh, the things that need to be delegated to you. And then you have to trust, right? That to me is that that's a harmonious complementary dynamic between men and women. If, if, if your man isn't masculine, 
as a woman, I don't, th I don't, I don't know a way that you can encourage him to be more masculine aside from you cultivating your femininity. Maybe, you know, you being that feminine energy may inspire the opposite in him. Um, you could encourage him to go to the gym, um, and boost his T levels. You could, you could prepare food for him, which is healthy. Um, and you know, is going to make his, his endocrine system function properly, keep him away from, uh, veggie oils and that kind of stuff. Um, you could encourage that he hang out with other men who are, um, masculine, right? Like, a man is going to learn masculinity from other masculine men, not from you as a woman. Uh, that's just, that's my, that's my personal opinion on the issue. Um, if you have to encourage it, there's a problem. Kind of like, that's sort of how I feel personally. Yeah, you know. Um... It's his father, brother's friend's job to encourage that, not women. That's my theory. I would, I would 100% agree with that. You work on cultivating your own femininity and that can inspire him to be more masculine. I agree. I think that that is probably the only thing that you can really do aside from like telling him to go do some barbell squats <laughs> and boost his tea. Um, I would agree with that. The most a woman can do is be feminine and defer to him. Yeah, I think so. If, if, if that's, yeah, if that's the kind of relationship you want, yes, I agree. Uh, what is your experience at your current stage? My wife is in her 30th week and she's experienced short of breathness. <laughs> it gets quite moody and anxious sometimes. Like that's me. Like I'm always out of breath. Uh, if she's in her 30th week, things are going to start to get real for her real soon in the next five weeks. Um, Things for me in my pregnancy at this stage are, they're good. Um, I'm like, I have no space left. I'm just, I feel so stuffed, but I'm always hungry. I'm tired a lot. I do get moody, but like not in a, like, not norm. Like I, I do sometimes become like a bit of a brat, but mostly it's like, being, um, like pitying myself, <laughs> feeling sorry for myself. It's that kind of a thing. Um, that's kind of my moodiness. Um, my husband does a great job of lifting me up, um, figuratively in those, uh, down those periods of downtime, you know, um, I want this baby out. Like, I just want to be holding my baby. Like I just, I'm done. I have had a beautiful pregnancy. I feel so grateful for this pregnancy. Um, I will continue to try and practice gratitude for every moment um, that I have um, with my baby still inside me because my baby will never be safer or under my thumb as what he is right now. The minute he's outside and in the real world, that's when things get real crazy, you know, you have way less control. So I'm going to try and be grateful, but man, uh, the ninth month of pregnancy is no joke. It hits different than the first and second trimester. I have a lot of I have a lot of pe pelvic pain, hip pain, back pain. It's difficult to sleep. Um, I have nasal congestion uh, when I'm sleeping. I'm out of breath. I'm tired. My body feels like it's brought to its absolute limit, and I'm just ready for labor. I'm ready to do the work of labor and get this baby earth side. So be patient with your wife. Things are only going to get more intense from the 30th week onward. You be that calm, um, stable, um, confident source of strength for her, and she will be just fine. Uh, trust the plan. No e-girls ever, no cat girls, no girls, period. Cat, ugh. what are you even doing here then? Why are you watching an e-girl stream right now if it's no, if you're a no e-girls kind of guy, huh? Hmm? It's kind of interesting, huh? Um... <laughs> uh... Okay, I'm going to end it there. One minute, one hour 30. That's a, that, that's a great 
I think that's a great amount of time to be live. Um, thank you everyone for hanging out today with me and um, asking questions and being chill. It's been fun. Uh, if you want to support my channel and more content like this, please leave a like um, and uh, a comment. And that interaction really helps um, with the algorithm and sharing, you know. Um, also, if you want to um, check out my other content, you can search Motherland on YouTube. And it will bring you to my other channel that I have with Blonde in the Belly of the Beast. We're going to be doing um, a co some content over there, I think, on Friday. So there'll be some new content. But we're like I said, we're both pregnant, guys. So you're going to have to um, you're going to have to be patient with us. It's hard to have a regular upload schedule when you know you're taking it day by day with your energy levels and your ability to be coherent. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. It's been fun. I'm going to try and do another stream next week. Um, when I'm feeling, you know, good sometime throughout the week, leave comments for ideas of things that we can discuss next week on the live stream. So yeah, take care guys. Um, wash your hands, <laughs> avoid large crowds. Um, Okay. Take care, guys. Bye.